everybody. It's me, Coach Rebecca, and I want to talk to you today about confidence. We are in season, a lot of us, you high-level gymnasts. So I want to just get right into it and tell you there are three things that you need in order to unlock your peak potential in sport. So if you want to have the best meet of your life, if you want to have the best season of your life, you need literally three things. That's it. Mental toughness training is like baking a cake. It's There's super clear formula that's all tested and retested and based on evidence and research that shows you if you fold in these specific ingredients, it will blow your mind what you are capable of. Okay, so there are three things that you need. Number one, awareness. Number two, confidence. And number three, self-trust. When you build those three things, you will become the athlete you were meant to be. Now, within those three things, there are different elements to each. So what I want to talk to you about today is one of my favorite confidence ingredients. There are six ways to build confidence. And those ways, when used on the dark side, are how you remove your own confidence without realizing it. But one of those six is one of my favorite favorite mental tools. One of the things that got me hooked on sports psychology, which is the reason that I'm doing this as my full-time career now is because of this one skill, because I saw how powerful it was. And I was like, give me more. This is magical. This is like ninja magic. Why does this work so well? Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you this, this way to boost your confidence fast. So if you are trying to get a skill in place by this weekend, maybe you had a setback or maybe, you know, you have a meet coming up and you're so darn close. You just need that extra push in the right direction. This could be something that could be very useful for you. So, um, I want you to think about the mind body connection. You know, when your mind and your body are connected and you're performing, it doesn't require any thinking. So for any athletes who have automated a skill, I always use the kip in gymnastics as, as an example. It's a, just a way you get on the bar. And it's so hard to learn the first time. But then once you get it, it's integral. You do it all the time. You don't have to think about it. You just do it. Your mind and your body are connected. So you say kip, your body goes, got it. And it just does it. It's almost like, like handstand. You don't have to think like squeeze your stomach, feet together, point your toes. You just do handstand. You know, you can always go back into thinking mode, but ideally when you're in competition, the thoughts are not necessary. You say kip, your body does kip. You say hit the ball, your body hits the ball, or your bat hits the ball. Excuse me, not a baseball player, obviously. Um, but that's what the mind-body connection does. It's awesome. So then when you go into competition and you have these thoughts like, I can't do it, what if, oh no, nerves, that's basically like saying kip and your body follows. You go can't, your body follows. What if your body follows? Oh no, your body follows. I'm nervous, your body follows. There is this direct connection between your the instructions that you are giving your brain and what happens in your body, whether you realize it or not. So you go in there giving instructions all the time. So if you're walking around saying, I'm so tired, your body is going to go boom. I'm tired. Or I'm so nervous. Your body's going to go, oh, I'm so nervous. So this is my favorite tool because it's a way to give your brain purposeful instructions. Then your brain and your body do its thing and figure out how. So if you can, if you can kind of grasp this concept of whatever you are, what the, whatever instructions you're giving yourself, your body is going to make it work. Your brain and your muscles are connected through this super highway of connections that you just have to send the car down and it happens without the thinking, okay? So this technique that I love so much is called imagery. You might also have heard of it as visualization. The reason I use the word imagery is because it's so much more than a visual. In order to give purposeful instructions to your brain that your brain then decodes into a sequence of physical movements that make it seem almost easy to do the skills you've been training. In order to have that full effect, you need a full set of instructions. So like if you were going to build something from Ikea and they gave you a set of instructions and the instructions only had pictures of all the parts but didn't tell you what to do with them. Or on the other hand, you had uh, a whole a whole written out thing that, that tells you through words 
how to assemble the thing, but there's no pictures. Either way, you would be like, what? I don't, I don't know what to do with this. So you need the full instructions. You know, you need all of the senses, not just sight, not just sound, all of them. Plus, you need to be feeling like it's real. The more real it feels, the more clear the instructions are, the better your body's going to be able to just get into flow and make it happen. Okay, so what? So let's say, for example, you got that one skill that you want to get nailed by this weekend. It's not a matter of just, you know, closing your eyes and imagining you're watching yourself on, in, like, on a movie screen or on a TV. You actually get yourself relaxed and you set the scene as if you're in it. This is virtual reality. So you're seeing it through your own eyes and you are feeling your feet walking on the mat and you're feeling your hands touch the beam. You're looking around and seeing who's there with you. You're smelling chalk and feet. You're tasting, you know, if you have a mask on and practice, some of us still do, like you're like smelling your mask and you're tasting your like that you're thirsty, you know, all that full experience that's happening is what you want to be feeling in your mind. You might even get up there and be like, oh, I feel little butterflies in my stomach. Oh, I feel a little sweaty. Oh, I hear this loud music or these voices. So you completely set the scene of what will it feel like when I am successful. And then you go through the skill through and you And you have every single sense in place. Now, this is the ideal. Take some time and practice to get to this point. But then once you figure out exactly what you want, first of all, you get really clear on what that will look, feel, smell, sound, and taste like. Did I forget any senses there? Uh, Then you experience it over and over. And this lets your brain know what to do. It's a full set of instructions. And your brain goes, okay, okay, boss, I got it. So now think of the benefits of this. If your bar routine is 20 seconds long, 25 max, you know, you can do a lot of good quality bar routines in your mind, whereas you can maybe hit five before your hands are like, please don't make me do any more routines. Your body's exhausted. But in your mind, you're powerful. You're warmed up. You're excited. You feel little nerves. You feel the, you know, the Um, what is the friction of your hands on the bars you feel that weightless feeling as you flip I mean it's fun it's the fun of routines without the pain of the routine you may and you may have a little pain to make it totally realistic if you do have like a big old quarter size rip on your hand that was story of my life but that way you can add this in and for every bar routine you hit in your real life body, you hit one in your mind and it's even cleaner, even better, even more confident, even more excited, even higher. It's just, you know, and then you get excited. And what's happening is that super highway of information between your your brain, your control center, and your muscles is lighting up like crazy when you do it physically and also when you do it in your mind. It's amazing how the mind and body react exactly the same way. It's called functional equivalence. It functions equivalently the same way as if you were actually doing it, which just delivers that clear instructions so that you can get up there and trust yourself on the big day. So go play with imagery, you guys. Now, a couple things to to mention before we wrap up. Common mistakes. A lot of the time, kids struggle with focus. Humans struggle with focus. So if you struggle with focus, you got to train that first because it's going to be hard to be totally present in an, you know, an awesome, powerful imagery experience. If you're like, squirrel, what's that? My foot itches, you know, so baby steps. With everything I do with confidence, we encourage baby steps. Can you imagine your bedroom? Can you imagine the very first part of that skill? Can you imagine it on an easier surface? You know, work on it little by little. Mental training is a series of little tiny exercises that are so fast and easy to slot into your life. You just got to do it, get better and be consistent. Okay. That's a lot of what we do in Perform Happy is we, we help kids to build that regularity and accountability to do the little tiny things that are going to make all the difference. Okay. So make sure that your instructions are complete before you go and tell your body to assemble this furniture of this skill. 
Um, hopefully that metaphor makes sense and give it a shot. Let me know how it went and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.